seems like a good thing. That I don't know who that is. It's been here the whole time. There's a knife and fork. Uh, Graham, Sweet. consume Yo. it. Well. Look at the screen, if you will. Oh, crap. Oh. <laughs> Foul. Wait, one more time. We don't have audio yet. Uh, uh, yeah. No. I can't. Foul. Johnny, I can't hear him. No. Foul. Hello. Oh. Oh, coming through. Hello. 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 Hello, growl, growl, I'm a dog. <laughs> ah. I am never gonna get fucking sick of this. <laughs> if you're so ferocious with the sharp teeth. Yes, here I am again for my now regular call in to the buses. How's life on the open road, by the way? Here I is my, here's my real face. It's not bad, it's not bad. How are you doing today? Good, bloody hot. How's, what's the temperature? Uh, oh, what is it? I don't know. Well, I'll take bloody hot. Off. That sounds good. Do you have a spider on your shoulder? Hmm? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, okay. That's, um, that's my friend Andrew Lloyd. Yes. What a great reaction from the room. He's, he's what I like to call my uh, Australian bellboy. Well, that's the joke everyone makes, isn't it? Mm. All, the, all the spiders. Yes. Though I He's, understand it's actually the snakes that are a bigger threat. Yeah, the story I got told is that of the top ten most dangerous snakes in the world, uh, eight of them... No, they're all found in Australia, but eight of them are only found in Australia. <laughs> well, great. Yeah. That's just a delight, isn't and it? And funnel spiders. But you know, I, I live in the city, so I very rarely see uh, dangerous animals, Andrew Lloyd notwithstanding. I mean, I saw one fairly big spider in a car park once, but he, w he was pink. I almost, I almost liked the guy. Wow. You don't see many pink spiders. Yeah. No, that seems like... Isn't that just nature's way of saying, I am not only poisonous, I am fabulously poisonous? Yeah, like maybe he's the only... Excessively venomous. I think it's also, it also can mean uh, I'm ripping off the style of guys who are poisonous. Ooh, yes. Is, ooh, could it possibly mean I have had an unfortunate accident with a can of pink paint? Possibly. He had really big feet as well, that spider. That's a terrifying I mean, thought. Mm -hmm. People are afraid of the little spindly legs, but these like ended in these big bell bottoms, and I just mm -hmm. I just couldn't find it in myself to dislike the the pink bell bottomed spider. I don't like the idea of a heavy footed arachnid. That sounds well, awful. at least you'll, you'll you'll feel him coming. People are now yeah. posting pictures of pink spiders in the chat. Great, great, that's great. I'm really happy about that. Um, Let me talk about puppies. On the so. Uh, uh, as you say, it is your 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 regular call-in, but uh, I guess for the benefit of anyone watching who may not be aware of who you are, why don't you uh, briefly introduce yourself and what it is that you do? Uh, my name's Yahtzee Croshaw, and I'm a spider wrangler. Uh, <laughs> make a lot of money from selling webs to a peculiar kind of fetish site. No, actually, I'm the creator of Zero Punctuation for The Escapists. I review video games. I also write uh, novels and occasionally make video games as well. Sweet. So, uh, as as is as is tradition, we have put up a blog post uh, on our uh, on our uh, main page where people have posted questions uh, for you. Oh yes, I noticed that. <sighs> we fixed it. Not on, not on my browser, but I haven't refreshed it. Yeah. I'm just yeah. gonna I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna build hate from that. You can you can. When, leave I, when I saw someone mentioned it, when I saw someone mention it in the chat, I uh, I was like, please, please tell me we didn't do that. But and I did. wish the chat would shut up about the hat. Oh yeah, that's true. You haven't worn the hat in a while. They're always yelling about the hat. No, I'm not wearing the hat. I haven't worn it in years. Same with uh, uh, Notch has the same problem. Everyone's like, yeah, oh, the hat. I, I don't think so, yes. Is, you are more than your hat. Darn exactly. it. And besides, now that you don't wear the hat, you can spite people by not wearing it, which I think is a win-win. Well, for you, yeah. at least. Yeah. I mean, there tends to be some association with that hat these days with a certain kind of male internet user <laughs> that I have a... That I have a 
horrible slight suspicion I might have been slightly involved in creating that image. Except you were wearing a trilby. Well, that's what they wear. I mean, they, they say it's it's fedora thing, but uh, most of those guys seem to be wearing trilbies from what I've seen. The Nick beard is the, is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Our engineering department is very happy that you've correctly identified the hat in question. <laughs> I think... What is it? I think a trilby is just a kind of fedora, but with a narrower brim. I, I personally have no idea. Ian, do you have any? That's, that's pretty close to what, that, what is actually fact. It's also uh, generally identified by being worn by horrible people. Ah, okay. So yes, pretty accurate. It is a shame, because it, it's, it's quite a stylish hat if you don't wear it, you know, with cargo shorts and sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on the upside, someone in the chat uh, has just said that you have uh, amazing hair, which is true, because I've seen it in person recently. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, it's been... I used to just comb it back, straight back, but since it's been receding a bit in the Widow's Peak style, it falls naturally into more of a side parting these days. Oh no! Andrew Webber's escaped! Oh no! Back to Yahtzee! What happened? <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, Andrew Lloyd fell off. Oh. There we go. There good, we go. good. Uh, Kathleen, let's uh, read some questions from that blog post. We have a variety of questions for you. Um, uh, Yahtzee, forgive me for being pants on head retarded, but when are you going to do more mailbag episodes? Never. Okay. Next awesome. question. <laughs> good um, answer. Good answer. I, I tend not to read my comments at all these days. I mean, you, you want to get some feedback, but, you know, just not that feedback. Yeah. Seems legit. Um, now, are there any video games that you didn't like at first, uh, or gave a negative review to, and then after you uh, had some time or maybe played them a little bit more, you gained more appreciation for them? I didn't really have time to play them again, to be honest. I mean, um, the one exception I think would be Mirror's Edge, which I did play again a while later just because I had some free time and I remembered it being very, very short. And I actually kind of liked it on the second time. Yeah. If you can keep, if you can keep the flow up, I enjoy then it, it's, that, yeah. it's not that. It's not that. It's, not that. it's got its issues. It's got a terrible story. I'm leading my head progressively backwards because Andrew Lloyd is creeping towards my nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Mirror's Edge, how do you feel about the fact that the series is getting a reboot with a new story? Is it a, is it a, re is it a reboot or a yeah. sequel? I think they're giving it a new story. They they th they found the existing. Uh, intense backstory that they had created far too much to overcome. Well, yeah, what a madcap romp they w wove in the first game. <laughs> well, that didn't take long, did it? Yeah. <laughs> Two spooks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Andrew Lloyd, you're embarrassing me now. <laughs> uh, you did a recent uh, podcast. No, I, keep I, it on, keep it on, keep it on. Nope. Sorry. I did look, I did look at the, um, I looked at the uh, trailer for Mirror's Edge 2. But it just seemed to be lots of uh, combat bits in the trailer, and that yeah. was the worst part of the first game. So it was. Um, that I was mean, always really irritating. Forgive me for wanting to see a bit of the free-running gameplay in the free-running game, especially now it's supposed to be open world. Is it really? Oh, interesting. That's what I've heard. It's supposed to be open world now, but they just want to show more of the incredibly bad pre-animated takedown moves. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, no, that is not a real spider. <laughs> Don't listen, Andrew Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever you, had you say any... that, a fairy loses its wings. I do believe in spiders. I do. I do. <laughs> Go uh, for it, Kathleen. Sorry. Have, have you ever had a video game that you uh, just found it incredibly difficult to review? Like something where you're like, I don't even know where to begin with this. Oh, there's been plenty of games along those lines. I mean... I guess something like Fallout New Vegas kind of had, I felt, had that sort of attitude towards because it, it felt like anything I said about it would just be reiterating what I said about Fallout 3. Because hmm. it was basically just more of it. But what I ended up doing with that re review was just uh, doing a sort of first impressions role play review where I just told a sort of in universe story about the fir my first. A few hours in the game, ending on when the game uh, crashed for me. So uh, 
I like to think that was one way I got around it. Not sure how well I got away with it. Fair enough. Speaking of video game criticism, in a recent podcast about Let's Plays, you talked about how it's actually an exercise in video game criticism when you do one. Uh, do you think Let's Plays are something you'd ever consider exploring as a thing that you would do maybe after you're done with zero punctuation or just on the side? I have been thinking along those lines quite a lot lately because, as you say, uh, uh, I have been doing a bit of Let's Playing on my YouTube chat with my mate Gabriel. And uh, we did some experimental recording with uh, my uh, capture device to try out some newer games. And uh, we think it went pretty well. We did, we got a, I got a video that I'm sitting on that we did a while back where we played Aliens Colonial Marines together. No. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do with that yet, but um, yeah, it might be something I'd be interested in doing. Because like I said, let's I'm really interested in Let's Play videos. I watch a lot of them because it's, it's an interesting new field of, of criticism in video games, I think, when they actually criticize the game and not just, you know, shout and scream because they're pretending to be scared and uh, uh, singing along to the theme music and <laughs> just keeping, making a running commentary of every button they're pressing. <laughs> When we're we end up watching a lot of them for uh, to sort of preview cutscenes for Unskippable, and the ones uh, that that astonish us are like are, are the ones that go in, very in depth with like, okay, here is the main menu, and if we yeah. go into the options menu, we can see there are options for display and for audio, and now we will go into <laughs> the audio settings. We can set it to Dolby 5.1 surround or stereo. I'm going to leave mine on stereo. And we go over here, and it's like we don't, we don't care. We do not care about the options menu. Nobody watching you cares. I love the ones where they don't even go to the options menu, where they just keep it on the title screen for five minutes and give a lengthy explanation of uh, what they are, what they are proposing to do with the next half hour of our lives. <laughs> if you're amenable to it, keep watching. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully this will be a really interesting video at some point. <laughs> Uh, speaking of your Let's Plays, uh, your, uh, the friend Gabriel that you do them with, how did you guys meet and why are you such good friends? Well, that's an interesting story. We actually met when he was hired as front door security for the Manor Bar here in Brisbane. Because uh, he's, a, he's quite a pop Brain. culture interested man and also Brain. very burly and does a lot of exercise. And I've learned a lot of uh, good self-defense techniques from him. Oh, wow. But what we found was that um, when I went to the bar, sometimes I'd hang around inside, but I always found myself sort of drifting outside to chat with Gabriel at the door because we just felt, we just clicked, you know? We, we had a chemistry. We just, once we started talking, we just couldn't stop. So I, so I eventually said, maybe we should try podcasting and uh, we ended up doing Let's Plays and here we are today. Do you guys have any shared interests aside from uh, video games? Well, you know, the general nerdy stuff. He likes Doctor Who, science fiction, and uh, comic books and stuff. Actually, we, we went to indoor rock climbing together once. That was fun. I was kind of hoping that you did, like, extreme bungee jumping together or something like that. Well, not exactly. He's actually, like, deathly afraid of heights, so I like to give him shit because I went skydiving once. So I think, you know, it's where the huge differences lie, where people really fit together, I find. I'm attracted to Gabe because I can uh, give him shit about being scared of heights. And uh, he likes hanging out with me because he can give me shit for not being able to do more than one pull-up. <laughs> that seems like an amicable division. Well, neither can I. Um, yeah. When you were getting your books published, uh, was it difficult? for you? Was there like a lot of wrangling that you had to go through? No, no, because uh, when my first book got published, that was because Dark Horse came to me after I was already famous uh, from Zero Punctuation. They said, hey, have uh, you ever considered writing a book about video games? I, they were, I think they were thinking something more along the lines of, you know, just a general opinion book about uh, gaming and uh, with a bit of a humor slant. But I said, hey, actually, I've already written this draft for a, a video game themed novel taking the piss out of MMORPGs, would that be interested? Would you be interested in that? And uh, they said, yeah, we'll check it out. And it just came from that, really. So 
you, unlike every other author in the world, basically just got to waltz right in and say, here is my book, publish it, and I went, okay. Well, I wouldn't use the precise. <laughs> it was more of a jig. Like, describe the dance. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say it was, you know, like a something I fell into with ease, because I've been writing novels for years and years and years before that, and was never able to get very far with them, sending chapters to publishers and agents and stuff. And uh, it's so hard to get, uh, get past the slush pile if you're not a name. Mm. And these days, I'm not sure how you would uh, get into publishing if you weren't already a name. So if people ask me for advice, I just say, uh, already have stuff out there. And the, in and the age of the internet is the best time you could possibly be doing that. Um, so, uh, this is completely different, but, uh, apparently you have said in the past that you love chocolate. Nestle or Cadbury? Well, Cadbury, of course. Alright, fair enough. Um, well, is Nestle now, into, uh, That's an the, easy call like for him because he lives in Australia, who presumably gets the same, gets the same Cadbury, um, uh, uh, recipe as um, uh, as England, whereas in North America, Cadbury is eh, better, it's yeah, better, it's still better than Nestle. It's better than Hershey. Oh, but North well, American like North American Cadbury is. Mm, eh. North American chocolate is pretty bad all over. Yeah. I think, when I understand, there's different legislation as how much actual cocoa solids you can have in your chocolate before you're yeah. legally not allowed to call it chocolate anymore. But Hershey's chocolate, if that was sold in any other country, it would be sold as cooking chocolate, honestly. I would not want Fact. to cook with that. That would ruin my recipes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, you've said before that out of all the games that you've played, Cooking Mama is actually one of your favorite games. Um, I wouldn't say it was one of my favorite games. Well, I just say, I think I've said in the past, it's sort of a guilty pleasure of mine. Okay, well, what? It's, it's just an easy high, you know? I play games because I like like I like petty victories. And Cooking Mama is a sequence of petty victories. You do something incredibly easy that it just told you to do, like press this thing. Press this thing for exactly three seconds or, or just push this in a slightly to the left direction. And then it will give you a fucking round of applause for having done it. It's just the easiest high in video games. Can we just spend the rest of the call talking about how awesome Saints Row 4 was? It was pretty good. I really enjoyed... It, 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 was it... Like, did you find yourself weirdly attached to those characters? I think I did, yeah. I mean, especially my character, because I had the Robin Atkin Downs Cockney voice, which I think makes a person extremely lovable. That's, that, that is the correct... That's the voice I've used ever since that character had a voice. But yeah, I think all those characters kind of started as sort of generic ciphers, but then, but then by that game, yeah, they, they've become this interesting sort of ensemble in their own right, with their own interesting quirks. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's weird how even, like, when you consider in the first game, the main character didn't even have a voice. Um, yeah. Uh, it was a huge step when they did add a voice, though, because um, a voice add, adds so much in terms of uh, characterization. Yeah. And because you could pick what voice they could have, you, you still felt like you were invested in the, in the creation of the character, I felt. Yeah. And what I love even more so about... Um, I think they did it in 3, but I definitely noticed it a lot in 4. They didn't just have the, uh, the actor read the same script. They actually changed yeah. a lot of the colloquial references. Yeah, that, that that's what uh, that's what was interesting because even though every line was basically saying the same, you know, sentiment, uh, the different voices could have vastly different personalities. Yeah, just when he's when he's you know he's using a lot of like very specific British colloquialisms and talking about you know going down to the pub and stuff like that, yeah, and I'm like making like that. Thatcher jokes and stuff. Yeah, he's Which making Margaret Thatcher references, and I'm like, remember in, in, there's a bit in Saints Row Three. I thought this was a nice touch where your character has to get plastic surgery to disguise himself as one of the baddies. Mm. And, he's, and uh, he also adopts the baddie's voice, so while you're in that segment, the character is voiced by the, by the baddie's voice actor. 
but uh, he has again he has different lines depending on what your your usual accent is. So when I was playing, this big American like general guy like like accidentally slips the word you know twat into the conversation or something, and then goes, oh yes, I, I did a couple of tours in in uh, England back in the day. <laughs> I I don't remember that that bit. That's awesome. I uh, I. Um Obviously, the, the, the build-up to Desert Bus was vast and immense, but uh, uh, I, I forced myself to make time to um, murderously devour uh, Saints Row 4 in a... You did in everything in that game. ...record time, yeah. <laughs> I did all the things. <coughs> sorry, I'm coming off a bit of a cold. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I had to... It's, I think it was started as a sort of bit of tonsillitis at the uh, uh, at the start of the weekend, and now I've just got this this cough that just won't go away. Does this happen to anyone else? Every time I take cough medicine, I, I sneeze. Right, right? Like the act of swallowing cough medicine makes me sneeze immediately. Does that happen to anyone else? Chat? It doesn't happen to me. And mm -hmm. Paul? Anyone else? It could be some sort of like, uh, some sort of conditioning. I know that I always, so we have this uh, cold medicine called Dimetap, which tastes like grapes. Mm. And uh, for, even though it doesn't taste bad, it's, it's actually more sweet than anything else. I've been conditioned from a young age to hate it because I hated having a Oops. spoon of it jammed in my mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Can you take this for two seconds? Yes. Apparently in Japan, their medicine tastes like root beer. Really? So, oh, really? Yeah, so I I, when we had uh, Japanese exchange students What just happened? Nothing. They would always tell us, don't buy root beer for your welcome parties because they will think it's gross and it tastes like medicine. I've heard that for a I remember thinking that the first time I tried root beer back in England, actually. Huh. Do a quick live test, actually. So I need to take kind some of, of this. Kind of tasted like the stuff they make you wash your mouth out in the dentist with. Oh, Dayquil is unique. Yeah, take well. it like a man. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> no sneeze, though. All right, just you. No, actually, it's not a sneeze, but I can see how someone would sneeze with this. Is it a nasal tingle? Is it a menthol? There's just a little, yeah, there's a little bit of a menthol tingle on the back of the nose. Well, Desert Bus, we're not plenty for the kids and doing scientific studies with very little applicable use. Excellent. Scientific studies. That's one test. Scientific studies of speech jammers with hop syrup. Perfect. If you ever needed to sneeze, like at the end of Inner Space, that would have been a useful resource to have. Uh, so oh, we must we 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 must get a uh, a seven dollar failure superhero. again. I was just oh, about yeah. to ask. That. Oh, so what was that? And a bell I I experienced uh, Andrew Lloyd integrity failure again. Oh no. Oh. Uh, so Yahtzee, I have one more question for you, and then I need to get a seven dollar superhero. But I think this is a. Uh, a really good question. As somebody who did struggle with, you know, writing books and getting noticed and stuff, do you have any advice for aspiring authors? Um, well, like I said, just keep putting stuff on the internet. That seems that seems to work for me. If it's good, it'll find an audience. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of crap out there, but there's there'll always be a few people who's willing to wade through all the crap to find the good stuff that nobody else has seen. As long as hipsters exist, you'll be fine. <laughs> You're the first person who's ever said, I hope hipsters never go away. <laughs> oh, the chat, the, the chat is asking uh, oh, right, yes. for how many ukuleles you might own. I own zero ukuleles. All right, tied for last place. Did we need to ask him that, though? Like, it's pretty, like, we've never seen... To be fair, I didn't I didn't think Matt Fraction would have any ukuleles, and he had one. All right, fair enough. Um, Why would I have... Who, who, mm -hmm. Is this a new hipster thing, owning ukuleles? No, no it's just one of our first call-ins was Molly Lewis, and someone asked how many ukuleles she had, and she had 11. Uh, because that's what she does. Yeah. And since then, the chat has wanted to know how that compares to the ukulele ownership of every other guest we've had. Oh, why, don't you, why don't you ask me how many full-sized coin-operated gumball machines I own? Why, well, Yahtzee, how many full-sized coin-operated gumball machines do you own? Give me a second. <laughs> One R. One R. 
Well, I have none. Fine. Uh, Seems good. So at least one then. One. I own one full-sized coin-operated gumball machine. Excellent. That's better than that's better than we have. Do you yeah. give yourself some sort of prize when you get the black one out of the gumball machine? Yes. My prize is I get to have a wank. <laughs> <laughs> and a black gumball. Good answer. Good answer. Next year we need one of those here with throat drops. Oh, that sounds pretty good. We'd make a lot of money for the children. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're not auctioning off Yahtzee's gumball machine. Uh, the shipping alone would be horrendous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Yahtzee, before we let you go, I uh, you've called in before. You know our deal. We usually have a question, like a running thing that we ask our guests. This year's challenge is seven dollars superheroes. Uh, could you please tell us if you could be a superhero, or if you think the world lacks a particular hero? Could you please tell them? Could you please tell us what this hero's name would be and what their power would be? Well, that reminds me of this thing, this conversation me and Gabriel had once where we were talking about uh, new ideas for completely useless superpowers. And two of my favorite ones from that were the man who can communicate with technology, but it all inexplicably hates him. <laughs> and the man who can turn invisible, but only while playing a trombone. <laughs> and the trombone isn't invisible. <laughs> Does he... Does he have to be actually producing noise? Yeah. I just picture like a scene where you got the, the two evil gang leaders having a meeting and in the background there's this trombone floating in midair going <laughs> So I'd go for, I, I want that. I want trombone invisibility. Love it. Okay, trombone invisibility it is then. And my superhero name would be the super invisible man because I want to actually get work. <laughs> That's the sort of thing you don't tell them at the interview, isn't it? That's good marketing. It's I can turn invisible. Great, you're hired. Now, <laughs> wouldn't they want you to like demonstrate it first, though? How do you how do you bluff your way through the trombone in the interview? I'd say, um, uh, you know, uh, behold how impressive my power is, and be you can see I am not using tricks because I will make this trombone seem to float in midair as I play it. Ooh. Oh, that's good, actually. Clever. New D and D item: the trombone of invisibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just writing that down for our trombone book of of, of secrets, I guess. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, um, do you, if you don't have any questions for us, we shall bid you adieu, and thank you so uh, much again for calling in. That's uh, all right. You're welcome. Enjoy your busing, my oh. friends. I will enjoy it as much as I'm able. <laughs> yes. We're and enjoy that northern hemisphere weather you've got going yeah, on there. It was really cold today. It's really cold yeah. right now. Yeah, it's cold yeah. right now. Really chilly in here. Please go Oh there. dear. I'm extremely sympathetic. We'll, <laughs> we'll walk it towards you. How, you how warm is it in Australia right now? Like well, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of got, got a bit of a sweat on now, actually, so pretty hot. Like 40, 50 degrees? Breaking. Yeah. Let's say that. Sure. <laughs> Are we talking least. Fahrenheit or Celsius or what? Celsius. Uh, Kelvin. Uh. Kelvin. <laughs> I, right. I made him snicker just a bit. 40 Excellent. Kelvin. No, that would be... Yahtzee, thank you so much for well, calling in again. We always appreciate it. Thank you. Have, have a good night. Have a good night, day, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Will do. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Donate money. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> what a Speaking great gift. Money. 